Okay, so Christine here was inspired by the Olympics recently. <laughs> so she went ice skating. Well, she needs more practice, runs a grace fall, she slipped and fell. What do people do to break their fall? They put their hand out, right? In that situation, Katie, what kind of happened to her? Okay. Yep. Only radius fractures. fractures. And then uh, what type of cast will we make her? Short. <laughs> Typically a short arm, probably, yeah. probably the most common cat. Well, Chris, she's annoyed with winter, so she's going on vacation. She wants a waterproof cast. So I'm going to make a short arm cast utilizing waterproof material called Delta Cast. Step one would be select a stockinette that's snug but not too restrictive. And then if you want a waterproof cast, we recommend the Delta Soft Liner. <laughs> and I took make my thumb hold before you put it on the patient, because yeah. less manipulation, the better. So a little trick in doing that, your hand is three or four inches wide, do a roll and then cut. So you're six inches from the distal end. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna apply the stockinette. Okay. And you want your stockinette to end right at the antecubital space, because you want to be about three finger lengths your cast should end three finger lengths from it because when they extend and flex, you don't want them to impinge upon the bicep there. My stock in it is a little bit long. I like that. That's by design. When you come around with the cast tape, if you bump them, the die does bleed the first two or three minutes you're using it. Now the next step in doing a waterproof cast, we're going to apply a layer of uh, waterproof padding, Delta Dry. I like to use three inch for most of my adults. It gives more coverage when going around. That's less revolutions than a two inch wide. It's my own preference. And here's a little trick if you haven't seen it. I'm gonna make a little fold here. I'm gonna place this on her all her styloid. That extra layer is just gonna give a little more cushioning for the patient. So I'm gonna place that on her all her styloid. I'm gonna come around, I'm gonna capture that. Angle up. Place your scissors in the patient's web space and cut 50% to the middle of the pad. You want to have about 30 to 40%, 50% of the padding there. Come around, your padding should end on the upper palm crease. Because when we fold back, we want a nice cushion. That's so nice, I'll do that twice. Place the scissors in the web space. You need uh, a layer and a half to two layers of the Delta Dry. So that's two, and now, now we're going to go distal to proximal, overlapping 50%, applying slight tension. You want it snug, but not too tight. You see I'm overlapping? When doing your casting, always have that extremity center of your body so it can work left to right. Every now and then, when I'm in a clinic or an ear, I'll see MAs or people do this. No, you're going to be able to control your application and the patient with that extremity right in front of you. Okay, and then we're going to end two to three inches. We'll cut on the medial side here. Who can tell me one of the most complained about areas of the cast? Edges. 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 Where else? The thumb. The thumb. Where the thumb. thumb is. So there's a couple ways to do this. I'm going to show you two tricks. I'm going to do the first one with the roll. We're going to make a thumb cushion for Chris. She's high maintenance. She wants a nice comfy cast. She is. So we're going to take about 10 inches of the Delta Dry. Cut it. Okay, fold it in half. Now there's slight adhesive on here, that's by design, so it sticks. Stick it, and now, I don't know if you guys have these, I'm from not far from here, use your Milwaukee muscle. Get <laughs> the Milwaukee Brewers in the opening day, right? That's right. Anyway, uh, stick it muscle. so it sticks, fold it in half again, and then you want to cut 50%, because we want to keep it low profile. So now, places in the patient's web space, come around and around, and it should stick to the padding. Now you have a nice thumb cushion. Okay, option two, either, I recommend it with a waterproof stockinette. Take about eight inches of stockinette, okay, about eight inches, flare, cut two to three inches so we can flare that around the radial aspect of the patient. Okay. Now we're going to make her a little turtleneck. Pull it down and back. And this way you can do it with your regular casting material. So you want to place this on top of the padding. Because then when you apply the fiberglass over it, it's going to hold it in place. 
if you start with this and then pad it, you're not securing it. So this would be another way to make a nice thumb cushion. Get the thumb there. Okay, I'm going to roll that back. Most short arm applications, you want to be able to pose all four. Now you have a nice thumb cushion. Mm -hmm. okay. Was that nice, everyone? I was saying, ooh. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so now we're ready to cast. You want to have all your supplies ready. You don't want to open up your fiberglass pouch until you're ready because your working time begins. If you think you're doing yourself a favor to get your roll out and open it, don't do that. I've done workshops where they opened it and then five minutes later went to it and it's starting to harden up. Mm -hmm. So you want to have everything prepared before then, um, including gloves. Who can tell me what temperature water do we cast with? Cool. Cool. Cool to room temperature. Mm -hmm. And I think there's some newer people in the room, so that's why I'm being thorough here. You want to use cool to room temperature water. The, the warmer the water, two things are going to happen. Your working time or set time is going to pretty much double. So that's not going to give you ample time to manufacture your cast. The other thing is the exothermic reaction, you may potentially burn the patient. If you use hot water, or Chris knows. Chris is a member of NAOT. Mm -hmm. I've worked with NAOT over the years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so the patient, it will get warm, uncomfortable warm. And to, to severe degrees, you can burn the patient. That's happened. So, Cool to room temperature water. Now, um, for your short arm cast, you can use a two or three inch width. Um, I'll go ahead and use two inch right away. So you're gonna open the pouch, fully submerse it, and you wanna squeeze it once or twice underwater. Thank you. So it ingraces in like a sponge. It's gonna uptake that moisture so the inner roll is nice and moist. Because if you just run underneath the sink, and I know some docks are fast, and you know, get a bucket, that's fine. But by fully submersing under the water, you're activating all the resin in the tape. Give it a shake once or twice. And then always when rolling, just like with your splint, you want to go roll side up. So I'm going to lock in here, the thumb cushion come around. And now we're going to cut 50% across. Put your scissors in the web space so it lines up perfectly for the patient. Come around. Use a cutter, not a twister. Yep. <laughs> or a folder. Yeah. You, some providers do twist, and that's okay. I've just learned over the years, twisting, you get a more bulk here. That's not a bad thing. It's a little more rigid. But make sure you have enough padding for the patient there. That's so nice. We'll do that twice. Take the same path. Your cast should be about three to four layers by the time you overlap point this little proximal. Place the scissors in the web space. Cut about 70% across. Bring it in. Fold and tuck. Now, we're going to go distal to proximal. Mm -hmm. Overlapping 50%. And again, you want to apply slight tension. Chances are that the patient has an edema or swelling. And when that subsides, if your cast is too loose, it's going to piston. You don't want any new fractures or, or injuries to the patient. So I'm overlapping 50%, going distal to proximal. Applying good tension. Stopping about three to four inches from the anti-cubital. I always recommend when casting, cut so gravity is working with you. So I'm going to cut on this side, on the medial side. If I were to cut here, the end may flap. So if you can remember that, that's going to make your task easier and you're not going to cast tape flop ever. When you're not using your casting tape, put it back in the water. Get your gloves wet. This is the initial lamination now. So I'm going to rub the tape. The layer is going to bind. It's kind of like a screen door. The layer is going to come together and bind. And now you want to be very cognizant of the position the patient's in. You know, as the doctor says or prescribed, for your short arm cast, typically it's neutral. It's about 10 to 20 degrees extension. Okay, now we got the initial set. I'm going to fold the stock in it down, making sure there's padding on the very distal and proximal ends. She doesn't need those fingers. Okay. That's fine, you can work all you want. <laughs> okay. okay. And I'm going to pull that back. Walk around her thumb. Again, making sure it's smooth, avoid any wrinkles or creases. And now, because she has only orange, I'm going to use a three inch, and you'll see a three inch. How much more coverage you get. Fully submerse, squeeze it once or twice under, take it out, good shake, slight squeeze. When you get fast, go ahead and squeeze more out. 
from the beginning, you want more moisture and more working time, and the tape will conform and laminate better when you have a little more moisture in. Roll side up, and lock it in here, come down, and on the distal proximal of your cast, you want to have about a quarter to eighth inch of the stockinette and padding exposed. I'll drop the scissors. Okay, roll side up. Scissors in the wet space again, probably about 70% or so. Capture that, and now we will distal proximal. And I increase my tension on my That's finishing okay. layer here. Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. With a three inch, there's less revolutions around. Come around again, tying off the stock in that. Work on this side. Put the tape in the bucket when you're using it. Get your gloves wet. Now. Now is the most important time. We're in the final set stage of the fiberglass, okay? You want to rub it. And with this tape, if you rub it, you'll notice there's little bubbles. That's surfactant. There's lotion right in this tape, okay? Now you want to put the position, the function you want to in. Your bones aren't round, your cash will be round. What if I use my fingertip to mold here? What would happen? I know what you're doing. Pressure. What happened? You would invent it and cause pressure and cause an ulcer. Yes. So never your fingertips. And if you can't fight the feeling, point your fingers to the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Remember that. But get, a, get a good Palmer mold, honestly. It's like a rap song. You'll neutral to 10 to 20 years extension. Okay. Your short arm waterproof cast. Okay.